All right, as you can see, we are dealing with the drought, extreme low water conditions, and this is a lake that we would typically take a, a bass boat to, but there's no way we're getting a bass boat in here right now, so this is a roller trailer only thing. You can see Al's backed into the, to the wheels, and look at this, the ramp is so low and flat. I just released the boattotrailer.com latch here. We're gonna barely be able to slide the sicker Alps, and you know, when you get to places where people aren't fishing, that makes fishing great, but also when you're dealing with low water, we've got no pressure, and low water means consolidated fish, so I think today Al and I are gonna put a beat down on some big largemouths out on the deep edge. Let's see if we can get this baby all the way off. We did it, we're good. Good day, boy. Night, you know, ideal day. Just enough wind to yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah, to make it comfortable. A little bit of haze. Yeah. Oh, I see some underneath this. Right on the end of this. Right on the end of this. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Right where he's supposed to be, Al. Not huge, but a good way to start the trip. On a classic spot, nice coontail bed in the middle of the lake with some rocks on it. I want you to know there's a big bass. That's what we're doing today is we're looking at some techniques for catching big old largemouth bass out of heavy cover. Oh, Al just had another one. I gotta make sure that I'm spot locked because right now it is a time of plenty. When you land on schools of fish like this, it can be just lights out. Another, oh, big boy. Oh, and it's, oh, it was almost. Double? A, uh, yeah, I lost mine. Oh. oh. Hey, for, I just love go. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Get beefed up right for these conditions. And it, once you get a taste of fishing this way, I like to call it combat fishing, <laughs> you know, in heavy cover with the, with the right equipment like this. Once you start doing this, you know, it's, it's actually addictive, <laughs> it really is. You wake up in the middle of the night, you know, waiting to hear that thunk. It's like you get up and set the hook. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Oh, it's amazing how sometimes you just gotta get the angle. And once you get that angle right, it's just bang, 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 bang. They're a nice fish, real nice fish. Kind of got Al in a bad spot, the way the wind's blowing here. Believe me, I'll fish around you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm retying here, Al can crack on a fish, and I'll kind of show you what the system is that we're, we're using here. So it's really as simple as hook line, and, hook, line, and sinker for this stuff. Now, one of the keys if you're fishing matted cover, like we are today, is to have some type of a stop. I've got a little VMC sinker stop on here, and this heavier stuff, Three quarter is kind of my go-to size, a three quarter ounce tungsten jig. Tungsten is expensive, but absolutely worth it. It really gives you a good idea of what's down there. Oh, and Al's hooked up. We can get to this after he gets unreeling in his monster bass. Step up in the school. Step up. Blech. Great fish. Yeah. I'm Great sorry fish. to interrupt you. <laughs> Go back and talk about tungsten. <laughs> I mean, the thing is with tungsten, once you start fishing it, uh, it's hard to go back to lead. It really is. It's hard to pick up lead again. Tungsten is, is, the, is the deal for that. Three quarter, if I was to just pick a size that you'd want to have in your box for fishing a lot of these depths that are, you know, eight to about 15 feet. That's kind of the size I would say that really fits a lot of those situations. So you can see I've got a four aught extra heavy. This is a ringed. VMC, extra wide gap hook, 4.0 is a great size for this. And then what I'll do is I'll put this stopper right on there, cut the tag, and we're in business. And then the plastics is a big deal. I'm fishing right now with what I consider one of the greatest all-time summer baits, and that's a craw tube. It's a big profile, it goes through cover really well. It's hollow, that's why I like this extra wide gap with those hollow baits. Al's fishing with the best flipping bait ever big bite bait and he's fishing the, the flipping hook on that. That's a great bait if you like fishing straight shank. There you go, look at that little package. Goes through there nice and tight. 
Yeah, this is that new new bait from Big Bite. It's called the BFE, best flipping bait ever. And it goes through everything, man. I've been catching a whole lot of fish on it this year. In fact, I called down there a couple days ago. It's middle of summer here. I said, guys, I need to replenish my supply. The bite's been that good. So I got a whole goodie bag coming back up again. But it is a heck of a bait for these kind of conditions. You add that with the with the craw tube, I don't think you need anything else in this type of cover. You got some cover up there? Yeah, I just hit some there. A little patch of it where you can see there's a little light, light dark spot right there. Oh, got him that time. Oh, Same oh. thing? Same thing. I don't think I've got a fish today that's, I've thrown it in and caught it instantly. It's been, really had to work them over. Nice fish. So what I'm doing here, as you can see, I'm letting the bait fall. And the key with this program is it always has to fall on slack. So you don't want to make a cast and engage your reel, because then your, your bait's going to basically fall back at an angle. You want the bait to fall vertically. If it's not falling vertically, it's not going to get to the zone of the fish. It's going to get caught up on the tops of the weeds. And that's not where the fish are. The fish are actually below the canopy. So that, that vertical fall is really important. And then you can see I'm keeping a pretty high rod tip angle. So I want the angle that I'm working the, the bait back to be relatively high as well. I don't want to be dragging through that stuff. I want the bait to be going up and down and up and down. So I want to show you this with the 360. You can see these little white grains of rice here. We've got it. You can the way the bottles mo bottoms modeled like that, you can see there's a lot of weeds, but when I get these little white grains of rice in there, that's exactly where we've caught the last three fish, and you can see that there's fish in that cover. I pay attention to this 360, or if you have side imaging in the bow, it's a big deal. You look for those little kernels, they, they'll still st stick out in softer bottom areas and weed beds, and voila, school of bass. There we go. That one too, yeah. doubles. Good one, good one. Good fish, yeah. the right kind, I think. Woo! Yeah. Uh, you know, in all the years that I lived up in Minnesota and fished these lakes, I never seen it get this warm, this long, water this low. We're dealing with extremes at every level. These water temperatures, and a lot of these lakes are, are pushing 82 degrees, 83 degrees. And uh, I got to tell you, the, the fish have been turned on. We've had some phenomenal, phenomenal bites. And uh, that their metabolism, they're not used to see, seeing water quite that warm and, and they like to eat. The warmer it is, I know you're thinking down south, well, 82, 83 degrees ain't no big deal. Up here, water temperatures like that are and it uh, uh, takes the combination of the shallow uh, drought conditions, the weed growth is different, everything is different. It's taken a big portion of the fish that would be spread from the boat docks to the bulrushes, to the lily pad bays, the frogfish. It's gotten so skinny in there, they all go out on the flats and out to the deeper edges and, and they start bunching on these edges and that's what we're dealing with. You know, we got a lot more confined fish. He's got another one. You know, the weed types too are, are, are quite interesting. This lake has, it's got coontail, it's got northern milfoil, the native milfoil, it's got cabbage, it's got, um, you, know, you know, crispus, curly leaf pond weed. So it's got a lot of different weed types and of course all the, you know, the shallow stuff, the pads, but we were looking for mats of milfoil and coontail. And I was here a couple of weeks ago and it was, it was really matted well, but in two weeks we've seen a lot of that stuff just disappear, it's not here, and now we found cabbage, the good broadleaf cabbage, and voila, we pulled up on it. So pay attention to the weed types as well that you see fish on, because that's one of the things that you can pattern. You start looking at lakes where there's weeds, weeds, weeds everywhere, and all of a sudden you go, oh, it's cabbage, oh, it's coontail, oh, it's milfoil. Those are the, the areas that the fish can really key in on. So definitely play, pay attention to the types of plants that you're fishing around. That, that patch is right up on top, ain't it? Yeah, right on top. Another good one? one? Good one. Big one. Big one. I love it. Well, not, not as big as I thought it was, but They enough. all feel good, don't they? 
right on the edge where I can flip her. I don't have to bend down her. Yeah, I got the equipment, heavy enough <laughs> equipment to flop them when they're this size, I can flop them over. You know, speaking of equipment, and this isn't for the faint hearted, you gotta beef up with this stuff. You gotta have the right rod, reel, line, and none of it is ultra light or fine or tiny. Oh, it's serious just stuff. Another, just another nice one. Just another nice one. Just these one after the other, after the other, after the other. I love fishing bass a lot of times a year, but this is one of my absolute favorites because the fish are maniacs. They're concentrated and they like biting. So like Al was talking about the equipment being specialized, this is definitely specialized equipment. And I'm fortunate right now that I'm fishing about the nicest equipment on the planet. So I'll start with the rod. This is St. Croix's Legend Extreme. This is the nicest rod they've got in the lineup. It's got all of their technology in it. Their most high-end graphite blended in certain places. It's, it's, it's amazing. And it also has these carbon guides. Carbon guides are the finest guides on planet Earth. So the sensitivity is unparalleled throughout this blank. It's extremely light, it's extremely powerful, and the sensitivity is amazing. Now, sensitivity really plays a role in this stuff because your baits are in such heavy cover, having a sensitive stick, it's worth paying the money. You don't necessarily need this, but a quality graphite rod for this really pays off because you can feel what's happening in there. Now, when it comes to the reel, this is another specialized piece of equipment that I'm fishing with here. This is Daiwa's Tatula Elite PF. The PF stands for pitch and flip, and that's exactly what we're doing. A couple big things with this reel. Number one, it's got this pitch flip button here, right? So when you're, when I'm casting, once I make the cast, I can just, look at that. I can adjust the button like that. The other thing I really love about it is the handle. This is a 100 millimeter handle. A lot of the reels out there have 90 millimeter handles and that extra 10 millimeters along with these big EVA knobs give you a ton of torque and a ton of cranking power. These are in seven and eight gear ratio, so they're really fast. You can get a bait out, pick it up really quick, get it out, pick it up really quick. And then additionally, this is really big when you're, you're target casting is the spool is really shallow on here. And so it allows you to have a really low trajectory to the water. So guys that are really into pitching and flipping, you know that silent entry is big. This reel is designed for silent entry. So everything about this combo is certainly specialized for this type of fishing. Oh, that looks like a good one. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Well, well, I'm landing him. You talked about the rod and reel. I'll talk about the line. <laughs> we're, we're, we're using Suffolk's 832 braid. And uh, uh, when you're fishing in heavy cover, stained water lakes, uh, you don't need fluorocarbon or clear, clear, clear looking line, light lining. That makes no difference. These fish don't care. So we're using 30 to 40 pound 832 in uh, stained water condition. So you might as well beef up to the best stuff you can do. Clear water, touch of your fish, I, I, I would change the game a little bit. Jared's got another one. I would change the game and go to fluorocarbon in those conditions. So, he is right. Braid is the only way to go when you're in this heavy cover. It just saws through the grass. The one thing, I, you, you kind of have to adjust, you know, your, your hook setting a little bit. It's so sensitive that like, as soon as you feel something, you don't want to just quick react. With fluorocarbon, there's a little more drag in it, and you can really crack their heads. A lot of times, when I'm fishing such a heavy power and fast action, I'm just reeling up fast and pulling on them, and that just sticks those fish like you no know, tomorrow, especially with this, these VMC hooks. They're so sharp, the fish just get nailed. This is why I caught that one, see? Huh? That's my kind of fish. And you've got really dense cover and darker water conditions. I mean, fish will really, really hold tight to it. It's not, not like fishing clear water and sparser cover conditions. You, you gotta get the idea out of your head when you're fishing this stuff that you wanna be making long casts and keeping the baits way away from the boat. A not flipper, this is a grabber. You're far better off to make shorter casts that are more accurate, that are more vertical. It, it really is amazing on how tight these fish will hold in this cover. 
it's amazing how important electronics are for this, for any style of fishing. And you don't have to have high-end electronics, but if you're, look how fat that fish is. If you're really into, into fishing, it's definitely worth spending the money to get it. So a technology that I've got here, I gotta show you, it's, it's Hummingbirds 360. Now this is, to me, what where this is most valuable is for understanding where targets are around you, especially hard bottom stuff. You can see fish on it, but right now, I'm able to see the waypoints on the unit, and I know that we went over, marked the school, and boom, I can see exactly where that school of fish was, and additionally, I can see where the cover is. So I'm not kind of guessing, just looking at a map and a GPS going, oh, I think it's somewhere out in there. I can go, all right, at one o'clock, if I cast at one o'clock, I'm gonna land right on that school of fish. Me like that. Right on the tip of a point. Hoo! Uh, there we go. Right. Another big large mo. Man, this is this is a hoot. You know, I'm fishing with the craw tube right now, which I think is just one of the best all-around baits for doing this this punching style or flipping style. But Big Bite is an amazing plastics company. These guys know how to make plastics and they make them in every shape, style, color that you can imagine for large mouth, small mouth, walleyes, crappies, you name it. But a question that we get asked even more so than like, what's your favorite soft plastic to use for bass is what color do you like to use? And really to me, it's pretty simple. Some variation of green pumpkin is almost always a winner. And then secondly, especially in these darker colored lakes, dark colored baits, a black bait, a, a black and blue bait. When you see those baits in the water, they really stick out, a lot of contrast. So if you've got something like this, it's a great, bluegill imitator or something that's really dark, I'm telling you those two colors, you can't go wrong. And a couple baits that we love, of course, are the prod tube and then that BFE. Boom, awesome. Yeah. Very nice. Large and in charge. But that fish was under, right under the boat here. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know how many times over the years I've done this. You know what? It never, ever, ever gets old.